What's going on all you mentees? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and join me today for an advanced look at some trade paperbacks coming out this week from Marvel Comics. So, please stay tuned. And welcome back everybody. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us advanced copies of all of these trades. All these trades are due out in the direct market on May 19th and then a couple of weeks later in the book market. So we have a reprint of an epic collection here, an epic collection, a brand new one of the Avengers, uh, a couple of complete collections, and then some trade paperbacks, some reprints of some Dark Horse Conan stories. Uh, but this is a big week. We have not only these, but we have two Marvel Masterworks. We have the direct market version of the Ven Omnibus Volume 1 reprint, and we also have the Aliens Omnibus which is freaking awesome and we have the Kazar omnibus but I mean it's a full week but I know some of you all just enjoy trade paperbacks so this is for you all or for anybody interested so let's go ahead and get started so we'll kick off this week with Captain Marvel versus Rogue pretty interesting collection I love the Jim Lee artwork right here on the spine and just the different variations of the characters throughout the years. Retail price of this one is $29.99. So this is a good mix if you're trying to understand the whole feud of Carol Danvers and Rogue. And it collects... Actually, I love the way that this kicks off with Marvel Super Heroes number 11, which was supposed to be a Miss Marvel comic before it got canceled. And then later on, they decided to reprint that story in the Marvel Super Heroes 11 and adding some more things to tie it into the Avengers Annual Number 10. So this does collect Avengers Annual Number 10, Uncanny X-Men 158, 171, 269, the Bubbles issue, Miss Marvel, the 2006 series 9 and 10, X-Men Legacy 269 and 270, and Captain Marvel 4 and 5. That's the 2019 series, the one written by... Uh, Kelly Thompson and we also have like I said at the beginning here the material from Marvel Super Heroes number 11 when it came out in 1990 so Here is the introduction of Rogue and how she was able to steal Carol Danvers powers in this particular issue written by Chris Claremont So it is the return of Carol Danvers Carol Danvers if you've read the omnibus or if you've read any of the trade paperbacks the epic collections containing her stories you know she's had quite an adventure of a life and then well without spoiling anything it gets into some controversial territory when talking about a specific anniversary issue of Avengers but Chris Claremont saved her out of obscurity and brought her back and of course the issue that she comes back in is the one where Rogue as a villain because it's also her first appearance takes her powers so this is what Rogue looked like when she this is from uh, Uncanny X-Men 158 when she returns as a villain and then eventually joins the team and I love this issue because this is the issue right here where everybody still treats her as a villain and then when Carol Danvers finds out that Professor Xavier let her into the mansion to become an X-Men oh man she loses it and during this time Carol Danvers is going as binary and she's one of the star jammers this fight right here is one of my personal favorite after stepping through the siege perilous rogue encounters carol danvers again and it's a pretty interesting take on this story as to the subconscious of rogue and then the ending is one of my favorite endings but chris claremont savage land rogue what else could you ask for then we get this story back here this is from the miss marvel era uh, the brian reed era of miss marvel and this is issues 9 and 10 when rogue fights carol danvers again and then we have some x-men legacy issues back here but it's pretty much the feud that has happened since the beginning rogue did her dirty and Carol has never really learned to trust her, no matter when she's going as Captain or Miss Marvel, going as Binary, going as Warbird, whatever variation of her superhero code name she's had, she's always at odds with Rogue. And I think it's something that a lot of people want to see on the big screen, but we'll see. I love that they included this recent run here. This is the 2019 Captain Marvel series um, by Kelly Thompson which has been solid now let's look and see if there's anything extras in the back 
censoring that final page of issue number five to show you one of the Asgardian variants here of Captain Marvel number four. Then we have some X-Men classics. Just reprinting those classic stories. And then an original page of Chris Claremont's and Jim Lee's Uncanny 269. This book retails for $29. This is Michael Golden on artwork. I forgot to mention that. Love his artwork. Uh, $29.99 and has 288 pages. Conan. Now, I haven't had a chance to read all of these except for a couple of them. Some of these I've already read in the past. But this one here, for some reason, I didn't end up reading uh, previously. So this is Conan and the Song of the Dead. So this collects all five issues. And I'll, here, let's go back here. Here's your table of contents, uh, who it's written by. But the interesting thing to note here is that it's drawn by Timothy Truman, who will eventually take over uh, the run of Conan from Kurt Busiek after Kurt Busiek leaves the run. So we are talking about the era of the Dark Horse Conan years. So this is the miniseries Conan and the Song of the Dead, written by Joe Lansdale and Timothy Truman doing the artwork, and then eventually he'll be writing the books. But I don't know how I missed this miniseries, as it's not collected in any of the Colossal Conan books, any of those Dark Horse releases. I'm hoping one day Marvel will do a Timothy Truman omnibus, um, just because they did the Kurt Busiek Conan omnibus. But this was one of the most adult and funniest Conans I've read. It was awesome. Um, I really enjoyed this particular story. So it's about Conan and one, what is this guy's name? Alvaraz, I think. And teaming up to try to find, of course, some kind of treasure. They end up finding a, a djinn out in the Stygian Desert. Sorry, I had to skip some of those uh, mature content pages. But I'm serious, this was one of the funniest ones. Like his take on Conan was a lot of fun. It's it's Conan back to his brutish roots. Like, you know, he doesn't speak a lot. He's just I don't know. I found it really funny and <laughs> there's one line I can't spoil it that he says in here that just made me bust out laughing out loud. I thought it was awesome. Uh, but this is what the artwork looks like. Truman's kind of kicking all kinds of ass on this artwork. I haven't seen his artwork. I'm used to him writing stories, writing comics too. Um, and let me see. There's also a story back here by Bart Sears. Or he supplies the artwork. So you have the Conan 2006 free comic book day story here. The Hyborian Age. This one here is drawn by Kerry Nord and written by Timothy Truman. Who, I, like I said, eventually takes over the book. And then this is the Bart Sears. Yeah, this is written by Ron Mars, drawn by Bart Sears. This is about Conan teaming up with two sisters and after some treasure. And of course, they rather have him than the treasure. And they end up arguing over him. So none of these stories were collected in any of the Colossal Conan, those big books from Dark Horse, if you're wondering about these uh, particular stories. And I think this is the way that Marvel is going to collect them. Uh, the short stories and the miniseries, because I think they've taken them out of the um, Conan Chronicles epic collections, which collect the Dark Horse years of the ongoing series. As far as the extras in the back, there's an introduction by Tim Bradstreet, and here's some sketchbooks, artwork in there by Timothy Truman, character designs, character studies, and some more artwork back here. And then what other Conan collected editions there are. The book has 208 pages. And I almost forgot to talk about what it collects in here. So this does collect Conan and the Song of the Dead. Issues 1 through 5. Free Comic Book Day 2006 Conan. Uh, Conan Trophy. The One Shot. And then Kiss of the Undead One Shot. And Island of No Return. The two issue miniseries. And then material from The Age of Conan. The Hyborian Adventure. Number 1. Which came out in 2006. Again, 208 pages and retails for $24.99. Robbie Reyes, Ghost Rider, The Complete Collection. So we have the new Ghost Rider, and he's getting his first complete collection. Might be the only complete collection because I don't think he's had a follow-up series since these. Uh, these have been previously released in trade paperback editions, just the slim trades. Here he is uh, when he's with the Avengers. But this is the adventures of the latest Ghost Rider, Robbie Reyes. Did I say Regis? Somebody take my Latin badge away. Robby Reyes. There we go. So if you're not familiar with this character, this takes place after Johnny Blaze's Ghost Rider, 
after Danny catches Ghost Rider. This is the brand new Ghost Rider. I think he appeared in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. series. But it is this character here, Robbie Reyes, who has a brother, Gabe Reyes, who's is bound to a wheelchair and he sees a bunch of punks picking on his brother and he does the right thing and goes kick some ass because that's what you do and he ends up yeah he he's a kid he works as a mechanic part-time and works on this dodge charger and eventually through a series of events gets shot down this is wonderful artwork here by the way by the amazing Trad Moore. He's the one that co-created the, the character with Felipe Smith, who does all the writing in the book here. But this is how he becomes the new Spirit of Vengeance. Now, this is a different Spirit of Vengeance, but I'll let you find out exactly who this particular character is uh, when you read all this. But this is everything that was released. This is everything that came before he joined the Avengers. And there are some other characters that do show up in here. Maybe some other Ghost Riders. That was a nice surprise. But this artwork, man, does Tradmore know how to bring it. And then after he leaves the book for a little while, it's Damien Scott. And I'm a big fan of his work, too. Damien Scott, let me show you what some of his artwork looks like. It's changed a little bit, but this is the gentleman that uh, worked on Batgirl for a long time with uh, Kelly Puckett. But he takes over the run after... Trad Moore ends up leaving for a while, but Trad Moore does come back for one one shot. And then we have Felipe Smith actually providing some of the artwork in later issues. Uh, so I I really like the character of Robbie Reyes. I'm sure he gets a lot of hate because people want to see Danny Ketch. But, you know, back when I was young, Danny Ketch got a lot of hate from the old guys at the comic book store, too, that wanted to see Johnny Blaze back. But then uh, Howard Mackey redeemed himself when he brought Johnny Blaze back with the Hellfire gun, so then everybody was happy. We had Danny Ketch and Johnny Blaze teaming up again. So, this is just a new Ghost Rider for our new generation. I'm okay with him. We also have team-ups here with uh, Amadeus Cho, um, Silk, X-23, or, I'm sorry, who was going as uh, Wolverine at the time. All-new Wolverine. Yeah, here they are. And... There was a really good story with his brother and what... I, I don't know. It's, it's To me, this was a really sweet story because it's mainly about the two brothers. And I think that's why I immediately just related to this character a lot. You know, he's taking up for his brother. I give my brother a bunch of crap, but at the end of the day, we're still family and that's what it's about. You know, I can pick on him, but nobody else better pick on my brother. That's the way I feel about... Actually, both of them. Yeah, both of my younger brothers. All right, let's look in the back here for some extras. This is a funny... Oh, there's a what-if issue in here. So this does collect the what-if one-shot Ghost Rider. Uh, so all new Ghost Rider 1 through 12. And the follow-up series, just Ghost Rider. It's a five-issue miniseries. And then what-if Ghost Rider number one. It's a one-shot. There's a whole bunch of extras back here. A bunch of variants. The book retails for $39.99 and has 432 pages. That is an awesome variant. I didn't even notice Deadpool, but that's awesome. Mike Del Mundo. This is the toy variant. <laughs> That's awesome. So you have the classic Ghost Rider, Danny Ketch, and then Robbie Reyes. It's a lot of Scotty Young covers here. Or a lot, just two. Yeah, and now we're reaching the age of variants. That is awesome. Dustin Weaver. Character designs and original artwork. Love to see this art, though, in oversized format. I think it deserves it. I know. I want a Danny Ketch Omnibus first, but this would be a nice follow-up to that. Okay, you spine watchers. Ready to pause that button. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We put out videos every day. Here is what all your spines look like from this week's books. Let's keep going. Up next is the Acts of Vengeance. This is the Spider-Man and X-Men only storylines in here. So if it's related to X-Men or Spider-Man, it's collected in this particular complete collection. Even though it doesn't say complete collection or epic collection, this is a thick book. This book has 504 pages, retails for $44.95. And here it is, uh, Jim Lee, Eric Larson, not working on the same book, but... You'll get the gist here in a second. So this collects Amazing Spider-Man 326 to 329, Spectacular Spider-Man 158 to 160, Web of Spider-Man 59 through 61, and 64 through 65, 
Wolverine 19 and 20, Alpha Flight 79 and 80, see what I mean, X-Men related, uh, and then New Mutants number 86, Uncanny X-Men 256 to 258, and then material from X-Factor number 50. So that is what's collected in here. And we've had another trade paperback of the Acts of Vengeance, which primarily plays mainly in the Avengers uh, by John Byrne storyline. It's mainly somebody gathering up all these villains to fight other superheroes. So you have somebody like Magneto fighting Captain America. You have, well, in this instance, you have the Vulture fighting the New Mutants. Um, and we also, during this time, we also get uh, the Captain Universe Spider-Man story arc. So it's villains that aren't used to fighting these type of characters, these type of superheroes, and they switch superheroes to fight. Thought it was a really cool. When I was a kid, I loved this story arc. I thought it was an awesome story, especially when X Men, like the Mandarin, was fighting the Uncanny X Men, mainly Wolverine. Psylocke changed, um, but yeah, I thought that's what. Yeah, there he is, and Eric Larson drawing this. You have Spider Man fighting the Tri Sentinel. Man, I wish I had kickstarted that thing. Haslab, Sentinel. Anyway, where was I? Graviton fighting Spider Man. Goliath fighting Spider Man. And then you have Alpha Flight here. Scorpion fighting Alpha Flight. I think it was Scorpion that ended up fighting Alpha Flight. Uh, Tiger Shark fighting Wolverine. This is the Archie Goodwin, John Byrne era of Wolverine. There you go. And he teams up with La Bandera. Which will be, this will be part of the Wolverine Omnibus Volume 2. And here we have some Rob Liefeld artwork in New Mutants number 86. Where the Vulture, I think they're also fighting Nitro in this particular issue. While the rest of the New Mutants are in Asgard. Here's some parts of X-Factor number 50. Or actually that's from the annual if I'm not mistaken. Nope, I was wrong. It's issue 49. And I can't show what happens here because that spoils something. But I can show you what happens in the Acts of Vengeance Uncanny X-Men. When you have Lady Mandarin. It's a new assassin. And she's going after Wolverine. So this is after the Siege Perilous. After the X-Men st step through the Siege Perilous to start over a new life. It's oh, this wonderful relationship between Jubilee and Patch. A.K.A. Logan. A.K.A. Wolverine. Oh yes, the beginning of Landau, Luckman and Lake. Oh, man, and you have Rose, who I was hoping to see when I saw the Princess Bar in the Madripoor scene of Falcon and Winter Soldier TV series. But hey, uh, you have Matsuo, who plays kind of a bigger role towards the beginning of the Jim Lee X-Men era. But that this is cut loose. I love this three-issue event. Uh, it was an event just within the Uncanny X-Men. So that's one thing I was going to say is that you don't really need to have read. Let's look at the extras while I talk a little bit about it. Uh, to read the main event, unless you want to get everything. To me, each one of these stories stood alone. Yes, there's a villain in the background that's telling, gathering all these other villains to go and fight opposing superheroes that they don't normally fight. So this is uh, the cover to the omnibus here. And both, actually both covers, the direct market and the standard edition cover are there and in other collections. And this is the Acts of Vengeance Marvel Universe and Acts of Vengeance Avengers, where the story mainly takes place. What really transpires happens through those issues. But as I was saying, I don't think you need to read everything. If you just want to get this for just the Spider-Man stories or the X-Men stories, you'll be just fine. You won't be lost. The first epic we're going to be talking about is the reprint of Power Man and Iron Fist number one, Heroes for Hire. So this is a volume one, even though you're looking at Power Man 48 and 49 and Power Man and Iron Fist 50 through 70. And I'll just explain a little bit about that. So this is a reprint of a epic collection that's been long out of print. And, you know, it was going for some significant amount of money because I was missing it from my collection. So I'm glad that they decided to reprint it. Um, so why is it numbered 50 through, what is this, 70, I think? Yeah. So the sales of Power Man and Iron Fist weren't the greatest. So what Marvel decided to do was combine the two comic series. So Power Man eventually became Power Man and Iron Fist. So Iron Fist joined. Actually, he joined uh, 
Power Man here, Luke Cage, in issues number 48 and 49, which all led to issue number 50. So as of issue 50, it's the beginning of a new era of greatness. All of this written by Chris Claremont, well, the first, I'm sorry, the first three issues, written by Chris Claremont and drawn by John Byrne. Um, then it kind of, they, they started going through a different uh, writers. I think Ed Hannigan took over the book for a little while. And then it's not until Mary Jo Duffy comes in that you kind of see the stories really develop. You start seeing more and more of the supporting cast. Here they are fighting the living monolith with teaming up with the X-Men. So you have their supporting cast of Colleen Wig. You have Misty Knight. Um, actually, El Aguila shows up in this. And he'll become somebody that shows up more and more as a supporting cast member. But I, the star to me of this particular book is right here. And that's Kerry Gamble. When he takes over as the artist, that's when I was hooked on this series. I love his artwork. It's so just full of energy. I, every panel is just filled. I, I think he's, I, I know it's probably going to sound blasphemous because, you know, John Byrne, clean cut, great artist. Don't get me wrong. He's one of my favorite artists of all time, but for some reason, Carrie Gamble's just artwork, just a little grittier, a little more action-packed. I don't know what it was. I, for, At least in this series, absolutely gorgeous. I think it's awesome, and it kicks ass. So it is pretty important to note that this series, because it was written by Chris Claremont for a while and John Byrne, does tie heavily into X-Men because you'll see Chris Cla or Chris Claremont. <laughs> you'll see Cyclops starting to date Colleen Wig, especially after the events of Uncanny X-Men 137. Man, that dude just bounced right out. <laughs> like he started dating. How are you gonna do your girl dirty like that? This does have the return of Sabretooth. That's right, because he first appeared in the pages of Iron Fist. Uh, but here he is written by Mary Jo Duffy. And like I mentioned, artwork by Carrie Gamble. Here's the final issue collected in this particular collection, issue number 70. And one of the things that I did enjoy about Power Man and Iron Fist, or Heroes for Hire, as they're later known as, is that they were fighting street-level thugs. They were fighting just gang members and things like that. You have some returning characters from Iron Fist and some returning characters from the Power Man series. Um, they do come back and make a return. But, you know, it's like everybody else, like all the team books were out there fighting. I mean, this is during the time when the X-Men were up in space or fighting the Brood or the Avengers were fighting Korvac, things like that. Meanwhile, you just had these two guys that were being heroes for hire. Uh, that's what I enjoyed most about this. And the chemistry between both of them was awesome. So I hope they keep collecting this. We So far, we've got three of these epic collections of Power Man and Iron Fist. We've got one of Luke Cage and one of Iron... Well, you only need one of Iron Fist. But I hope they keep collecting the whole run, even though the... <laughs> Danny's outcome isn't the best outcome. But I'll leave you to find out what I mean by that. Let's look at the extras here in the back. So we have some house ads. That's right, Mike Zek does fill in a couple of issues. And then a Sabretooth classic cover back here, which this reprints the issue of Power Man and Iron Fist in here. Uh, the book has 448 pages and retails for $39.99. And epic number one from 1977 to 1981. And last but not least, Avengers Epic Collection, A Trader Stalks Among Us. I cannot remember the original title for this. I remember Curtis and I getting to announce this. Speaking of announcing, I hope to be announcing something soon with him, like the m upcoming Marvel Epic Collections in the first quarter of 2022. Very excited. Uh, there's a whole lot of new books as well as some reprints. So here we have The Avengers. Uh, this is all written by Roy Thomas, and then Steve Englehart takes over the book. There is one story in here, if I remember correctly, uh, by ha Harlan Ellison, one of my favorite writers of all time. Uh, this was also has been collected in the Avengers Omnibus Volume 4, uh, all the stories that are in here. So this does collect the Avengers 98 through 114, and then Daredevil 99, which is an interesting crossover. Um, to defeat, well, a particular villain, and we'll get to it here in a second. So the first three stories, um, or issues 98 and 99, rather, are pretty much a setup for what happens in issue 100. This is our very first 
anniversary issue. And one of the things you'll notice is this beautiful artwork here by this guy named Barry Smith, or who will eventually become Barry Windsor Smith, as most of us know him. But he is here with Roy Thomas, so that's right, this is the same team that did the Conan Marvel years. And this is what the artwork looks like. It's a big team up against Ares, and they team up with Hercules, and then later on we get Steve Englehart that takes over the book. And when he takes over the book, it changes a little bit in tone. Uh, he gets a little more personal, especially with the story of Vision and Scarlet Witch. And how Pietro is just throwing a freaking fit about his sister and how he won't allow it. He won't allow her to date an android, which, dude, get over yourself. Uh, we do have the return of the Sentinels. I love this story arc here. Uh, this is still Roy Thomas. Uh, but then Roy, what ends up happening is that Roy Thomas ends up becoming editor. So he has to step down as the writer. But Steve Englehart ends up taking over the book. Uh, so it's the return of the Sentinels, who we last saw in the pages of X-Men that were written by Thomas and drawn by Neil Adams. And now we have Steve Englehart here. With a dramatic change to Scarlet Witch, even in hair color there... Hawkeye donning this costume here, and this is where they end up going to the Savage Land uh, to fight Barbarous and the Mutates, like Amphibious, Brainwave, L'Oreal, that was her name. She makes an appearance here. And speaking of appearances, oh, this is a story inked by Dave Cockrum. So you're going to see a lot of classic art within this particular collection. There's a return of a villain that we haven't seen since Avengers number 2. And speaking of return villains, there is this team up here with the X-Men. So this is a pretty interesting story. Just, I just remember Magneto wearing Angel's like costume in this particular storyline where the X... Yeah, right here. So Magneto is donning like Angel's costume, but he's back. He's returned. But not before we cut away where you have to read Daredevil and Black Widow 99 where Hawkeye shows up. Really doesn't add much to the story, but... I'm glad that they included it in here because they do tell you at the end to go read this story and then come back to wrap up the storyline of Magneto coming back. So this is during the time when X-Men were being, well, it was a canceled title and they were just reprinting older issues. But this is one of the appearances that Magneto had outside of the X-Men. We also get the introduction in this issue right here of uh, Mantis, issue 112, who brings back a classic Avenger to join the ranks. And she herself forces herself into the ranks of the Avengers. And I'll let you find out how all of that plays out and what happens exactly with that particular storyline. But that story continues into the next epic collection. So let's look in the extras here in the back. So we have some covers here to the Essential Avengers. These were the big phone book collections of black and white reprints of Avengers. I mean, they were thick collecting, uh, yeah, 25 through 46. This is number two. And they also collect the back cover, but they were all in black and white. And speaking of black and white, here's some original artwork. Dang, that's awesome. This is unused pencil art by Rich Buckler. I forgot he was one of the main uh, pencilers in here. So this book has 400 pages and retails for $39.99. Some more original artwork. And what other epic collections are available? Those fonts are going to get smaller and smaller the more they add. I love it because I'm a big fan of the epic collections. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in any of these books, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for you. As customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content and page count of each of these trades. Let me know in the comments down below which ones you're picking up. If you like picking up books like the Thick Complete Collection of Robbie Reyes' Ghost Rider, if you pick up all the epic collections, if you missed out on the Power Man and Iron Fist Epic Collection Volume 1 and this is your chance to get it, or if you're going to get the Captain Marvel vs. Rogue for yourself or for a friend, 
to introduce them to this whole feud that Carol Danvers and Rogue have had over the years. Again, this was The Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and on Patreon. Amazing ways to support the channel. All of that information is in the description down below. More importantly, all of you stay healthy, stay safe, and much love. <music>